I would like the community to look at my work and be reminded of what we once held unto, of what helped us to coexist, such that in the next 50 years, when someone looks at this piece, they are reminded they are brought back home. In my art practice, I choose to specialize in weaving and welding while sculpting, because to me, I feel this define who I am. I grew up seeing my grandmother weaving. And right from my childhood, I've been embraced with the weaving products. I love the art in it, and I feel as an artist who is aiming at being a traditional archive of information, I feel we as a country and we as Africa have beautiful techniques that need to be preserved for the future generations. To me, welding is the first stage before I do weaving. I deal with monumental pieces. I do architectural sculpture. And uh, the size of my pieces always call for a strong skeleton. They always call for a strong amateur. When people see me welding, they get amazed. But when it comes to me as a person, I feel it's more than the gender aspect. To me, it's the end product that matters most. And as soon as I switch on the machines, to me, the whole world just shuts down. And I love the way how the sparks ignite the energy within me, ignite the creation ability within me to bring what I have in my mind onto board. So I use materials like Kroatan cans. In Luganda, they are called Enga. These are got from swamps. And these have been locally used to make chairs, to make baskets, to make a lot of household items. I also use banana fibers in my weaving. And to me, I feel this puts out my message clearly of being a traditional archive in my artwork. I also collect polythene and use it to do weaving as a way of protecting my environment from soil exhaustion, environmental degradation, to mention but a few hazards that come along with dumping it hazardly. This is how my rope looks like. It's a collection of color. It's a collection of um, interweaving and interlacing. People that purchase these are mainly fashion designers and then some installation artists. And even me myself, I use this in my sculpture piece. This here is one of the installations that represent many of the materials that I've briefed you about. It has polythene bags, it has rantan canes, it has plastic, metal to mention but a few. So this piece here is inspired by a weaver bird, um, a weaver bird's way of life. It's set out to the public to remind them not to lose hope amidst the challenges they're facing because just like you see the weaver bird on top, it has one wing. This is to tell them no matter the challenges you're facing, no matter the hard time you're facing, you can still make it in life. My art practice is inspired by my community, that is to say, the challenges that my people face. And as an artist that does public art, I felt a need to document the values that I feel are facing away from us day by day. In my art, I also look at activism. While addressing activism, I inspire the community, I sensitize the community, I cause them to act, to say no to certain things that I feel are not right. For example, I've dealt with concepts like women empowerment, women inclusion, um, say no to modern slavery, to mention but a few. The passport exhibition was inspired by one of the deadly globally challenging issues at hand today, and that is human trafficking. In Uganda, and even the entire globe today, people are being trafficked, you know, within the, the country and across the borders. So to me, as an artist that does public art, and my colleague, Tadeo, who I co-exhibited with, we felt a responsibility of acting as a bridge. To conceptualize the passport exhibition, we had to first meet with the victims of human trafficking. They briefed us in depth about this matter. Under the guidance of this information, 
we embarked on studio experimentation and exploration. At the start of the exhibition, I had mixed feelings. I was a little nervous, a little scared because uh, this was like one of my first uh, joint exhibition uh, where we're only two people. And uh, seeing people coming in gave me a point of relaxation. Seeing people interact with our pieces was a point of validation and they kept on sharing with us how they felt, how this impacted on them and we were blessed along the way to get some people from the public confessing that they've been victims to this. It's good to have this uh, kind of exhibition because it is teaching when people come, like young girls, even ladies who want to travel, before they travel, they are told, they, they, they know what, they, what is all about human trafficking, how you are trafficked, how you are, you are treated when you are outside there. Even here in Uganda, it's there, but it's not as harsh as the outside countries. Courtesy Jacqueline's technique of painting is a good one because the approach used is realistic and can easily be related to with, even if you do not have so much knowledge about art, at least you'll pick the message. These are the problems that we are facing and unfortunately few people are talking about them because if you focus on our society you're going to see a lot of desperate youths who think that their bright future is going abroad and working. They've even failed to concentrate on working in their own country to find a living or to better their futures. Getting to know how people feel about their pieces and how they are impacting on them is a take home for me. When I go back to the studio, I know that at the back of my mind, people have got the message taken home. And this gives me happiness as an artist.